Welcome to Character Design and Creation Week 4. So you guys know the drill. Um, we're going to start with questions. So anything from last week? Any questions from week 3? Anything on resurfacing? Um, attaching an ear to a head? UVs? No. Philip says nope. And then the rest of the classrooms, just all crickets. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, so just as a reminder, you guys, this is your last week. So stay on track. You can do it. Don't get distracted. I know there, that there's some awesome games out right now. Um, so just stay on track, get done with it, and then enjoy your time after class. Reward yourselves with some games. Yeah, complete understatement that there are amazing games out there. Um, if you guys are anything like me, I'm like this. I get distracted super easy. <laughs> so do your best not to stay or well, not to play games and to stay on task. That's what I meant to say. Don't stay distracted. That's horrible. All right. So as a reminder, there are no exceptions on week four assignments. OK, so those of you who have been taking those um, those exceptions week one, two and three, this is really the week where you're going to have to catch up and really give it your all. Um, the final project is not a just blow it out of the water in an evening project, okay? We're expecting to see some high quality work here. So let's see what we can do. All right, week four. So this week I already gave it away. You're working on your final project. We've been talking about it all month long, tying everything into, oh, and you'll be doing this for your final project. When you do this for your final project, I must have said it a million times. So your final project is building an arm, a human arm, bodybuilder. Okay. So we want to see some muscles and some vascularity, you know, those awesome veins that bodybuilders get, um, from the shoulder all the way down to the fingertips. Okay. So here's just a quick image here showing you're going to probably do a base sculpt it and resurface. Okay. So what I'm going to do basically with you guys tonight is kind of walk through the steps of the assignment. Okay. And I'll show you some files, maybe demo a couple things, and then that's it. So tonight's going to be maybe a shorter class um, or not. We'll, we'll have to play it by ear and just see. So the first part of the final project is your plan. Okay, so you're going to be gathering reference images. So again, this is going to be a bodybuilder arm. We want to see muscles. You don't want to be doing a little skinny arm like my arm because, let's face it, as much as I pretend, there's really no definition there. <laughs> okay, so get some really good arm reference. Think of celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He'll have good reference all over the place. So he's a good one to pick. Um, and you're going to find some reference of a sleeve because you're going to be creating a sleeve for that arm. So once you have these reference images gathered, you're going to compile them into comp sheets. We're going to be looking for one of an arm. So here's a good example of an arm comp sheet. Okay. So we're seeing a lot of Full arms, we're seeing hands for when you get into those tertiary details. You're going to want more images of hands. We have a lot of angles of the arm here. Torsos are chopped out. I mean, we really don't need a bunch of images with torsos in them when we can use that space to show more arm angles, right? Um, so that's a good example. Now, a bad example would be something like this. Okay, this is just... You know, we've got an arm that's not in a relaxed A pose or T pose. It's pose. It's doing the strong man flexing pose. Um, this is using a CG arm that really has no definition. I'd really prefer if you guys could stick to actual photos of an arm rather than somebody else's work of an arm that they kind of, they already did half the work for you. You're just kind of copying at that point. So, you need to find photos of an arm, not little CG pictures, and uh, use those. If you're using like a CG ecroche, like somebody sculpted, you know, th th that can go either way. They could be doing something that's a little more stylized and the muscles might not be what we're looking for, which is human anatomy. It might be a little more exaggerated or they might be missing some silhouettes in some angles. Okay. So, Really, I really recommend just sticking to photos. Um, they're pretty easy to find all over Pinterest and even on Google. 
Yahoo has the image search. I don't I haven't used Yahoo since like 1994, <laughs> but hey, it's still there. So you can use that too. Um, so your comp sheets should look something more like this. I should see a bunch, a bunch of different images of arms, um, all angles. Hands are good to show too. Um, fingers spread would probably be easier. Yeah, these are some good examples. Um, the next comp sheet you're going to be creating is of a sleeve. Okay, so this one was pretty good because it had the arm down at the side, so we can see the different shadows and gravity and how the fabric's pulling on the shoulder and how we have some overlap and creasing. Um, and then they found some images where the arm was straight out to the side, so we can see how the sleeve would bunch. So if you're doing a character uh, with your character's arm up in a T-pose, we should probably see more bunching of the fabric at the shoulder than if you were to model something in a pose where we would just see the bunching under the arm like this, okay? So finding a whole bunch of angles with the arm in different positions is very helpful. I'm mean, gonna even found the shirt with just a shirt. Um, this would probably help with seams, seeing where the seams are laid out. So that's good, that's what it's got. Good. Now a bad example would be something like this. Um, for some reason, there was a texture placed here. We don't really care about textures because we're just focusing on sculpting. Okay, so I don't really care about textures. Um, the sleeve here, this isn't really a good picture because it's really tiny. Um, this one, again, we don't really need to see the whole shirt. We could have just cropped this arm out and scaled it up and just use the space better. Okay, use that space efficiently. Fill it up 100% as much as you can because uh, in the end, if you don't have enough reference, then that's going to reflect in your model, right? The more reference you have, the better your model is going to look because you have more angles to compare to in those reference images. So this is a good example. Aim for this or better. Don't do this. Okay, the next step after you go in and you grab all your reference images of arms you're going to go and create a plan write-up. So this is where you're going to tell us how you're going to approach this assignment. Okay, so with all the assignments you've done in the past, um, with the Z-spheres and the Dynamesh, um, even with the Maya build, you should have a basic idea of how you're going to attack that base model, right? So what are some ideas you guys are kicking around for starting your base arm? How many of you think you're going to try doing the primitive build and Dynameshing it? Or how many of you are doing maybe uh, just a Z-spheres build and then adaptive skin and modeling from there? A primitive and then the Dynamesh, yeah, it's, it's a cool way to do it. Primitive and then Dynamesh, cool. Yeah, I'd like to see how those turn out because a, a few students, um, I haven't seen anybody actually attempt the primitive build and then the Dynamesh. So I, what I would like to see from those of you who are planning on doing it that way, um, just make sure that when you Dynamesh, you don't take it any further from that Dynamesh. Don't smooth it. Don't go crazy with it and start sculpting like crazy. Just give me that base from there, okay? So export it as soon as you have it and set it aside. You're good to go. Um, because then from there, we, of course, when we see the sculpt, we'll see that you went in and added the detail you know, more secondary detail, tertiary detail. Um, anybody here going to try doing Z-spheres? I see you guys are aiming more towards the Dynamesh. Any Z-spheres fans? Not really. Fought with them enough in the simple builds? <laughs> Blah. Aw, poor Z-spheres. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that's okay. However you decide to build this, it's entirely up to you. Um, no love for the Z-spheres. That's okay. <laughs> um, so it's cool to kind of see what you guys are thinking. So this, this plan write-up, you're going to actually just tell us, okay, I'm going to go ahead and for my base, I'm planning on doing this and starting this way, and then I'll export and do this. Now, let me be clear with this, you guys. It doesn't have to be in paragraph form. You don't have to give me an essay. All right, you can give me bullet points and say base, and then give me a bullet point and say Dynamesh, and then maybe under that it's got another bullet point of how you would approach building that. Okay, you can tell me tools you're going to use, um, but I don't expect something like, I will then use my 
move tool and move it exactly two degrees to the left. I don't expect that. Please don't do that. Those are no fun to read. <laughs> um, give me give me a good amount of detail so I know that you understand the tools you're using and the steps you're going to take to get to that final model, but I don't need to know. Then I will use my move tool and bring out the arm exactly seven degrees. I don't need to know that. That's okay. You can just say, I'm going to use the move tool uh, for my major overall shaping. And then I'm going to go in with inflate to help build up some muscles. All right. So that's something like that is more along the lines of what we're looking for. Um, once you are done with that, you are going to create three plan images. Now take note. Um, this is of the full arm. Now I know on FSO, they show you images of the, probably from like the forearm, the middle of the forearm down to the fingertips. Um, but we want you to do the full arm front and back. Okay. Sometimes I only get front images of just the top of the hand and I'm like, this isn't a full arm, do the full arm. So remember guys, this is very, very, very important. This is written up in the assignment, but sometimes it can be overlooked. So make sure you're checking that assignment and reading it thoroughly. Um, but remember front and back of the full arm, front and back. Um, so with these planning images, you can show us primary forms, secondary forms, and tertiary forms. And I do have examples from the actual assignment. Um, but again, don't just do a hand. Show me the entire arm. Now, we didn't do the entire arm just because if we did it for you, we kind of take away from the critical thinking part of the assignment, right? So instead of showing us a before here, you can even show us this can be front, and then this could be back. Okay. Remember, this is the full arm. So what we're actually doing here is we're just taking some uh, just real basic shapes and we're just filling in that silhouette and kind of mapping it out with these shapes. Okay, so you'll do that in Photoshop. You'll create a layer on top of the arm images that you grabbed and you'll just fill those in. Okay, so here's an example of secondary forms. I don't expect you guys to put this text in here. This is just something that we put in to help you, okay? So don't put the text in. We know what secondary forms are. We just wanna see you doing and highlighting different areas that would be considered secondary forms. So this is, like it says here, uh, major silhouette details. So main muscle forms, tendons, and larger bone landmarks, okay? So those are secondary forms. Now tertiary forms, these are the smaller details like veins, wrinkles. Um, I'm not expecting you guys to do hair because, uh, come on, you don't have to do that. Um, but we're looking more for veins. We see the fingernails, cuticles. We got the knuckles here. Okay, so you're gonna just take a circle tool, highlight those all the way up the arm, front and back, okay? And then you're good to go. Now, before I go any further, because I know I just gave you a ton of information, are there any questions on the plan part of this assignment? Anything? Pretty straightforward? Nope, okay, cool. All right, next up. From here, you will start building. So this is the build portion. This is where you actually get down and start building the arm that you've been wanting to make. And here we go. So the build. So we're looking for two meshes for the base. We've got an arm and a sleeve. So when you submit this, I'm looking for layers, two layers separate of an arm and a sleeve. Do not combine these at any point in the sculpting process or in the build process, okay? Now, if you are using Dynamesh, remember, once you get an arm shape where you're hitting those primary forms, that's probably where you'll want to export that and just show us, here's my base, okay? Um, same goes for the Z-Spheres build. If you're using Z-Spheres, anybody who's maybe in uh, archive land out there watching this, um, if you're using Z-Spheres, after you create the adaptive skin, do your shaping to get those large primary forms nailed down, and then export that as your um, 
as your OBJ so that you have that. Okay, so things to think about. Again, we're looking here at a student example, all right, but what we're noticing is the arm is not posed or it's not in a flexing pose. Like we looked at back here, remember I was like, whoops, something like this. This is going to be a lot more difficult to model, okay? So the arm is not posed, so find something that's in a relaxed A pose or T pose. Um, the arm and sleeve are still two separate meshes, and we're looking for primary silhouette and form visible in all angles. So what I mean by that is um, we're not seeing cylinders. I don't just want to see two cylinders here. Oh, there's my base mesh. Okay, I want to I want to see it pushed a little bit further than that um, to where we're seeing that primary silhouette. Okay, we should see proportions nailed down. Um, it should look like an arm or a very muted, detailed arm. All right, are there any questions on what we're expecting for a base model of an arm? No, okay, good. Moving on, all right, so this is where you're probably going to spend maybe 85% of your time in the sculpt, okay? Because, well, first of all, the tools are new. Everything's, you're not very familiar with the tools. Um, even though we've had assignments in it, still doing a couple assignments, it's going to take practice to where you go, okay, I need to use this, 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 and this to get my end goal, right? So this is probably where you're going to spend a lot of your time. Again, if you're doing this um, and you are sculpting these details, make sure you import the sleeve and the arm separate. Don't combine these uh, from your base. I want these separate the whole way through. Okay, and um, there are videos on how to use subtools. Uh, subtools, again, if you guys needed a refresher on that, they're, they're kind of like layers inside of Photoshop, but instead of images, you will have different pieces of geometry. So this would be on subtool layer one, and this would be on subtool layer two. And I'll, sh I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, and there are videos on the assignment, but just to make sure you guys are cool on that. All right, so we're keeping these separate, so they're still two separate meshes. And uh, this is where we push those secondary and tertiary forms. So this is probably where you're going to be referring to these plan images you created to make sure that all the areas you mapped out as your secondary forms are being shown in your model. So we want to see those reflected in your model. Um, and again, with tertiary forms, you had them all circled here. This is where you just look at your reference and you make sure that you sculpt those in. Okay? So just keep pushing those forms, doing your best. Take your time. Don't panic. And if you run into any problems, just email me and let me know and I'll do my best to help you guys. Okay? Because this is the part where I, probably most of you are going to start going, oh my gosh, this is a big assignment, because it really is a big assignment. Um, now, for those of you who are planning on using the primary builds, um, I do have some cool images here, and I found these on, I believe I found them on Pinterest, okay? So these had some pretty nice primary um, blockouts, I guess you could say, that are showing the base forms within this arm image. Okay, so maybe using anatomyforsculptors.com would be a good idea, right? Because we can see how they're showing how the shape changes in that arm. Um, these are showing it bent, but this is a really nice shot right here from the front view. And then we have another one here. Now, this one's really cool because if you start sculpting, um, this – this is called an ecroche study. How many of you have ever heard of an ecroche? Do you know what ecroche is? Yeah, Elizabeth, okay. Um, would you care to explain or? Basically, I'll, I'll help you out here. Basically, ecroche is fancy French for without skin. So basically, you're studying um, how the muscles overlap and work together. And sometimes if you look at videos online, you'll when people start sculpting, sometimes you'll see them actually just start using their brush to build in these shapes. And they'll leave it kind of 
um, with that texture, it looks very stri lots of striations, I guess. I don't know what the word would be, but there's a lot of, you can see their brush movement, um, but they're just going in and just blocking out those forms um, and just looking at muscle. So if you look at images like anatomy, just muscles of an arm, that might be a way to approach taking that base mesh up to a secondary form by doing an ecroche study and then smoothing it out a bit so it doesn't look like just flat out muscle right there. Um, because you do want it to look like a human arm in the end. So ecroche. So when you get into PRM and they're like, okay, let's talk about ecroche, you'll be like, I know what that is. I know this, so everybody will be in a chat, and Paul will say, hey, we're going to talk about ecroche. Does anybody know what that is? All of you are going to be like, hell yeah, I know what that is. I learned that in CDC. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I'm sure you guys know what we're going to do. We're going to export that sculpt. Okay, we're going to bring it into Maya. So we got the, the, the arm and the sleeve both still separate. Okay, export it out separately. And then we're going to begin the task of resurfacing. So you guys know how to do this from last week. So remember what you used and the processes you used here in CDC. And my biggest thing that I can recommend to you guys is get reference. Okay, so find reference. Look at other arms that people have made in 3D at this point and look and see how they ha have their edge flow working and wrapping. Maybe are they having it just completely straight down the arm and relying on normal maps or are they actually curving that edge flow around the bicep and around the deltoids to help support that shape? Um, now, because we're aiming more towards a film quality model, I would definitely recommend looking at something more where the edge flows contouring and helping to go with that muscle rather than something that's more um, cylindrical and just chopped straight down the line there. Okay, so grab your references, take screenshots of that arm. Even if you do a front and a back, then I would recommend maybe at that point contouring, find those major contours, those big silhouette changes, and then go in and resurface. Or you can just evolve those contours into wire draws. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so plan and then attack. I don't recommend just going in blindly and going, okay, click, 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 and then ending up with a whole bunch of crazy edge flow. So at this point, are there any questions as far as how to resurface or maybe the, the plan and then attack, anything? No, quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So once we have our resurface done, it's nice and pretty. Our edge flow is gorgeous. What we're going to do then is create our UVs. So we're just finalizing. This is our last few steps to finalize and get this thing exported and sent right on out to us for grading. So you're going to UV. So what are you going to think about when you're UVing? Seams, distortion. Um, where you're going to place the seams for the shirt. Okay. Remember, if they're in the shirt, just put them in the same spot. Cut those seams right underneath the arm on the top of the shoulder. It will help to hide seams within the actual sculpted seams. And it'll look a lot better, too. Um, and think about what tools you're going to use to create your normal map. Do you guys know what tools you will be using to generate normal maps from your sculpts? Think back to MCR, it's in Maya. Anybody remember the transfer maps tool? Remember hearing about the transfer maps tool? All right, so Dan does, awesome, okay. So you guys are going to be using the transfer maps tool. So it's something you're already familiar with. Um, there is a video on how to use it and what to watch out for when using it. Um, so I'm going to show you guys an image here. And if your normal map looks like this, so we're seeing every single edge here, 
I'm going to kind of quiz you guys and see if you remember anything from MCR. What does this mean? What happened? Does anybody want to take a guess? What could this be? Now, 90% of the maps that were submitted last month look like this. Um, and this is addressed in the video on how to use the transfer maps tool and what to watch out for. But if your maps turn out like this, you're going to need to soften your normals. Yes, there you go, John. They didn't soften normals. So make sure if you're seeing them, this is my big warning to you guys, because I'm going to be like, I told you to soften normals. No, <laughs> make sure that you soften your normals and you won't get this. You'll end up with something more like this. And that's what we want us to see. This is good. Yay. This, soften normals. No, don't do that. All right. So once you're done, you're going to make sure that you apply the maps to your arms. Now, we want to make sure that these load when we get them, right? We want to open them up and the map should automatically load. Now, one of the things that ends up happening is after you make your map and you call it normal map, okay, some students will go in and rename that to follow the naming convention, but the actual file, your bump map, is still sourcing normal map .tiff, not last name, first name, underscore, CDC, blah, 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 blah. It's only sourcing normal map TIFF, and then it won't load when we open it up, and then you won't get points for that. So make sure that after you rename this, your, well, actually, it shouldn't be like this, your normal map, make sure that you are taking the time to resource that in your shader, okay, so that it pulls just that file. Okay, so once you're done with all of this and you've sculpted and you spent all week doing all this work, what you're going to do then is you're going to make a three to five minute long video blog. Okay, so um, for the assignment, we tell you to use Photo Booth. It's entirely up to you if you want to use QuickTime, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Okay, but we, all we want to do is we want to hear from you and kind of get a reflection of you know, what worked for you? What didn't? What would you do differently next time? Like, let's say this time you started with DynaMesh, maybe next time. Uh, maybe I'll try ZSphere's next time because I had a lot easier time creating the adaptive skin on my simple build. So maybe I should have went with that for making the arm. You know, just reflect and tell us how things went. Um, if you encountered any major issues, um, tell us how you fixed it. Tell us how maybe if you didn't fix it or maybe if you did fix it, tell us where you found the answer to fix it. All right, and be honest. Tell us, how do you feel about the end result? It says, I think it says be honest in the, uh, the assignment, too. So that these are pretty easy. Again, the, the most time is probably going to be spent here in the sculpt. Okay, so are there any questions on the final project? Now I'm going to go do some examples for you guys and show you some stuff after we talk about the lecture activity. Okay. Um, but for now, okay. So this week's lecture activity is pretty quick. Okay. So what I'm going to have you guys do is grab screen, grab a front side and three quarter view of your character that you made in ZBrush. And what I want you to do is just draw out the edge flow you would use to resurface or retopo your critter. Okay, so I'm not looking for you guys to actually go in and resurface it. There's just no time for that. I want you to focus more on that final project. Um, so you're just going to draw, like on another layer, the edge flow that you would use to resurface. So basically your plan before you would attack. So here's an example. It's just one angle because I wanted it to be nice and big here on the slide. Okay, so just really quickly they went in and just drew the wireframe. And you guys know how to do wire draws from week one. So these should turn out, you know, this should be pretty quick. There's another example. So we're seeing, you know, radials around the eyes, um, box junctions to expand in areas that are needed. Okay, so when you're done with this, you're going to po post your sculpted character displaying second, well, actually, this is wrong. It's not displaying secondary and tertiary forms. We're looking for, I changed this too, 
displaying the wireframe used to resurface. There we go. That sounds nicer. Post your sculpted character displaying the wireframe you would use to resurface and concept share. There we go. And the lecture activities week four folder. So that's the final part of that. Um, your lecture activities. Okay. Now week four reminders. You have the lecture activity, which we just reviewed. In your final project, this is the big one, the big daddy. So really pay attention to naming conventions, how we're asking you to submit. Okay. Um, just take your time. Remember to source your bump maps correctly so that they load on any computer. Um, anatomy quiz. Anatomy quiz is open source. So you can go look, use an anatomy book. You can look at Google and get your answers. Okay. They're just, it should be pretty easy. Um, Cause I know in the beginning I told you guys, I don't really know much names of anatomy, right? I said, I, you know, the names of anatomy, I really don't care about. What I care about is the shape and what that muscle is doing. Okay, so I let you guys do this one as an open book. It shouldn't take too long, so just take your time. Use Google, it will help. Um, and then you have your week four discussion. And of course, the final project will be submitted to the final project activity on FSO. And don't, if your file is too big, it shouldn't be too big. It shouldn't be more than 500 megs. Um, if you get to the point where you are taking the sculpt and trying to put it into Maya and it just won't load and it's too big. There's a step that you need to do in between the sculpt to exporting to Maya. What would that be? Anybody want to take a stab at that? What do we do if our mesh is too dense for Maya to handle? It's in ZBrush. There we go, decimate. We're gonna decimate those meshes, okay, so that we can reduce the size of them but still keep the amount of detail we're seeing. This way, it would also kind of reduce the amount of geometry we're seeing um, once you go in and resurface and your file size won't be a gig, all right? It should only be, it shouldn't be more than 500 megs zipped. It should be good to go. So remember, decimation is important for getting that model out and into your Maya. All right. Let's see. Now I got to change these. Now your last open labs um, are basically tomorrow night uh, from five till nine. And I had my last open office hours today. Um, so there are none of those left. But if you do feel like you need some help come Monday before the final submission, I will have office hours from 2 p.m. till 6. So if you have any last minute questions, technically I should be helping the next class, but I, I feel like I still want to help you guys get that final model up and uploaded and good to go. Okay, so I will be on iChat this following Monday from 2 p.m. till 6, just as usual, same time, same place. Now, are there any questions? Where is the week four discussion activity located? Now, I could be wrong, but I believe we got rid of that. It should be on the front page. It should say discussion. If it's not there, then we got rid of it. Um, we've been doing a lot of restructuring. So if I was incorrect about that and it's not there, then don't worry about it. Okay, because I think that we actually tied in the evaluation here. That kind of counts as your final week four. Yes, I did just mention it, and it probably shouldn't have even been in here. So let's, there we go. There, so that's all you have to do. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Before, we used to have you guys do the evaluation and the discussion, and I think we were like, why are we having them basically tell us the same thing twice? So we got rid of the discussion. So week three was your final discussion. Yay. Because I know how much you guys love doing those. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a look um, inside of ZBrush now. Um, now, this is an arm. I'm hoping that it loads okay. Okay, I'm actually moving my go-to training panel off to the side, so just 
when I ask for questions, ask then, because um, I won't be able to see your questions immediately. All right, sorry about that. I had to get a drink really dry out today. <clears throat> okay, so what we're seeing here, uh, this is an arm that Marcus was working on, okay? And what he was actually doing is he was working on the sleeve here. So I'm gonna show you guys a way that you can actually create a sleeve inside of ZBrush. So first thing we can do is we're going to mask. So we wanna make sure I'm actually make my brush size a little smaller, use this. And I'm just gonna kind of look at where the sleeve is at on the arm here and just try to match it on the actual 3D arm that we're seeing here. So I'm just gonna try to maybe mask it like this. Okay, and don't worry, if yours does that and makes a big black square, it's just, it's just a uh, graphics error. Don't worry about it too much. And actually, I think I'm going to grab a little bit more so I can kind of shave away some of the masks. So let's go ahead and go a little bit further here. And what I'm going to do is I'm holding down Control and Alt. So what that's going to do is it's going to erase. Now my brush is a little bit too big. Zoom in a bit more. And I'm just going to try to get that cut on the arm just like we saw in our reference there. And sometimes we can kind of go in and clean it up. Actually, I'm just going to go in and paint it. So do something like that. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect um, because we can actually go in later and adjust the shape. Let's see, so that doesn't look too bad. We definitely want to fix that up a little bit. Maybe something a little bit more like that. Let's frame it up and take a look. Now this would probably be pulling back too, so we could fix that. Let's see. All right, so actually, we're gonna just use this. Okay, so there's a really cool thing that we can do inside of ZBrush here. Um, it's actually under the Subtool palette. I'm going to go here to Extract. Okay, so you click on the Subtools. It's right down there. Let's click on that. And what we have here is we have extract. So once we click this, it'll create a new subtool. Usually it shows you a preview first. So if I hit preview and I take a look at this, I'm going to actually go at an angle here so I can make sure the thickness is okay. So that doesn't look too bad. It might be a little too thick. So if you just move your camera a little bit it will get rid of that. Um, so I'm going to go in here we had it at 0.01 so let's do 0.05 let's let's try that. It's a little thinner so that looks better. Okay so once you are happy with the thickness here that we're actually we're just using this little slider here once you're happy with that you're going to hit this button here that says accept right there. Hit accept. Oh man, that moved the whole thing. There we go. Probably because I have the GoTo training panel and it's confused here. All right, so now I have two sub tools. One of them is Marcus's, so you guys can ignore that, but one of them is the one that we just created. Okay, so it's actually these two. Now, how the sub tool palette works, I'm going to kind of give you guys a quick rundown. Now, this little eyeball means that it's visible. If you click on this, it'll hide it. And I can clear out my mask. And I can work on my arm just by itself like this. Um, but if I want to turn my sleeve back on, I just hit that eyeball. And now, if I were to sculpt, so I'm just going to show you as an example, I'm only sculpting on the arm. Okay, you need to actually go down here and you see how it's a little, there's a little box around this? That's my working layer. So if I click on this, now I'm working on the sleeve that we created. So after you create, after you extract, okay, you do an extraction like this, what's gonna happen is your mask is going to be on that extraction. So how do we clear out a mask?
Anybody? Sleep mode. Can drag. We can do the opposite, right? If we do command and alt held down, we can just kind of highlight it. So that's how we clear a mask. Um, or we can do command A and then usually we can hold down command and tap outside, but it's not working in here for some reason, but it's okay. We can just do, I just don't want to do that. We can just do the opposite, hold down alt, hold down command and drag, and then we have the whole thing selected. Okay, so now we can use this and start sculpting. But before we do a lot of sculpting, we're going to want to define the shape a little bit more and then export that as our base sleeve mesh, okay? We don't want to go too far with it because then at that point it's getting into the sculpt, right? So my computer is really upset because I decided it would be a good idea to run Maya at the same time. So if I lag out or this crashes, it's okay. So again, we can just go in here, kind of maybe smooth the edge. Oh, and it's frozen now. I'm gonna rotate now. Yeah, it froze on me. Um, it's kind of working. There. Man. So guys, don't run Maya at the, at the same time. Um, not the best idea. So this is where we'll go in, kind of shape this out a bit more. Now, if you want, you can actually grab the edge of this. We can create a, a DynaMesh from this mesh too. Um, and you can actually go ahead and bring this out so that you've got a bit of the torso too. Sometimes that helps when you go in and start sculpting the muscle. So just like what we're seeing in the picture here behind, if you want to do that much, just a little piece of torso just to kind of help, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, so that's how you create an extraction to create a sleeve. From here is this... I'm going to do the, oops, why is that colored like that? Hmm. Maybe I was painting while I was doing this. Let's clear out. Now, this is a project file that um, Marcus gave me. Sometimes it gets a little buggy. Now, it looks like we're seeing, okay, here's what happened. If you ever click on this, you guys see that little paintbrush? What that does is it enables poly paint. So when I clicked it back on, I was like, what's going on? It's colored. I didn't even, he probably didn't even know he was painting this. Um, but that is what happens, okay? So from here, this is where <clears throat> Marcus went in and did some masking. He probably masked out some of these areas where he said, okay, I've got a wrinkle that is right here. So if you just mask that out, just be very careful. Paint. So I've got something like this. Okay, we can invert that. Hopefully it works, there it goes. And there are things that you can use that will kind of help you guys as well um, with masking. There, if you scroll down over here on the right, you'll see deformation. If we open this up, we'll get a whole bunch of different options. And um, this is helpful for when you're doing things like this because we can actually go in and maybe if you want, paint your masks. And then we can use something like inflate here just to kind of bring that out a little bit. Now it might be too much, you have to be really careful as you're doing this because you don't want to be like, there's a wrinkle. It doesn't work like that. Just kind of be very careful, bring it out just a bit. Maybe we want to smooth it. So there is a smooth in here too. So we could smooth. And there's a gravity. Now gravity is pretty cool, um, especially if you have draping that goes this way. Okay, so let's say maybe if your character's arm is in A pose, you'll probably have more pulling like this from the armpit. Um, mask those off, inflate them a bit, and then use gravity. Now, 
gravity doesn't really work too well on the verticals, um, but we can, I can kind of show you what it does. It tries to give it weight and push it down in Y. Okay, so that's a really cool one. So this one works really nice, at least to give you a starting point. So these guys, smooth and flat and gravity. And just click in here and kind of play with the slider until you get something that you like. Okay. Now, if you notice over here, we have these little tiny X, Y, Z. So basically what that does is it, whatever one is lit up is the one that's going to be affecting your model. So if I go in here and I click off this and then maybe I turn on Z, if it lets me, there we go. Now it's going to be pulling it towards the camera, towards us, because of where it is on the axis. Now, if I want it to go the other way, oops, be careful, because one, one time I was like, let me click this little X, and it did one of these, and it saved it, and I was kind of sad. Um, but we can even use something like, like this to get a little bit more overlapping, slide that over. Or we can use a giant move brush. Whatever you decide to use, again, it, it, there's so much stuff up for interpretation, really. Um, it's really up to you how you're going to use these tools and get that overlap, okay? Another thing to think about, um, always pay attention to large over, overlapping areas. If you have any overlapping areas, um, you can always go in with, let's say, maybe a standard brush and use Alt and kind of push in some areas. Now, if you have your arm, why does that keep moving? I know the go to training panel's there. Stop freaking out. All right. So if you have your arm here, and I'm moving the panel. There we go. You can kind of see if pushing that in is going through the arm. We can fix that with move. Not a big deal. Okay. So B, I'm going to grab standard. Use Alt. Maybe push this in a bit. Um, but really, masking is a good one, too. Um, I know when I was first learning, one thing that they always kept saying to me was, oh, you need more anatomical overlap. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Um, so something that was shown to me was just taking, so we know that this fold here is overlapping. And we have, if we were to unfold this, that fabric would probably be that in a little loop. So something we can do is we could just go in, hold down control and just kind of mask that out again like we had it. And then BMV for a move. We could just kind of push this up against it a little bit or even pull that down. And what that does, it just gives us nicer nicer edges, sharper lines, um, when it makes it look like that fabric is actually folded there, okay? Um, another tool that's really nice to use for creating folds, how many of you played with the damn standard brush? Usually it's a, it's a Damien standard, so you can see it's by Damien on the bottom there. Um, but this one's really nice because it should have a bit of a drag on it, but what we can do is we can go in here and have lazy mouse turn on. And what that does, it just kind of makes it so that it kind of just drags behind a little bit better. I <laughs> take no credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Damien, for the cool brush. <laughs> um, but this one's really nice. If you hold down, let's say, like when Marcus went in here and did these folds, um, a lot of the times what we can do is we can actually hold down Alt because by default this pushes down. You see that? So if we want that to pull up, we can hold down Alt and it will pull up. And we can kind of paint out where we want these folds to show up. And yes, it is pretty sharp. But if we smooth these out, remember, think about fall off. Uh, now what I mean about fall off is where those folds begin and end. This also goes for veins and wrinkles. Don't just, be, don't just go in and go, there's a wrinkle or there's a vein. 
Okay. Usually with wrinkles and veins and such, you're going to, you're going to want to think about where do they fade out? Where do they come in strongest? Okay. So really think about your fall off. That would be one of the critiques probably that we would have given the student example that was on the keynote here. So if I go back to this um, and we look at this arm, a lot of the veins are very, very sharp and they're just like, stop, stop. They, like here is nice. They have nice fall off. So it looks like it's actually going underneath and back into muscle. And, and But this one's pretty sharp all the way down. I would have just smoothed that out slightly so it didn't look quite as exaggerated. So as you guys can see really quickly, we can kind of block in with the Damien standard. Okay. Um, remember, hold down all kind of sketch in those wrinkles. They don't have to be perfect because we can always go in and fix them. Smooth a bit to kind of knock them back. And then if you run into areas that have these sharper creases, um, the pinch tool works really nice. So go over here. He lets you pinch. Thank you. So we can actually go in and grab this guy and pinch him up a bit. Now, I'm not used to my new Wacom, and I'm doing a lot more stuff than I probably should. Um, but you can get sharper creases, just like what we're seeing here. And, you know, it might shrink things on you, but it's okay. We have the inflate tool, my favorite tool in the world. So we go back over here, I for inflate, N, there it is. Let's scale this brush down, maybe get in here a little better. And inflate does a really nice job too. I don't know, it's like the best brush ever, right? We're all We can kind of contour this a little bit more. I'm just pushing down, smoothing. Oops. Be real gentle. <laughs> or it will freak out and give you something crazy. But there we go. We have some more wrinkles. Now, I probably should have put this more towards the top of the arm and angled it so it's wrapping that way. But again, it's nothing we can't change. So we rotate if it lets me. I'm going to freak out again. There we go. Just move it around. Remember, look at silhouette as you're working too, okay? I know in art they were like, watch your silhouette and form. So do that in here too. So we're trying to get these nice forms in there, keep on moving them, pull them up. I don't know why this thing is random. It's like, I'm going to work now. No, I'm not. It happens. This we can kind of bring those in, bring them up. And again, think of fall off. Um, think of what would happen. Where does that wrinkle go? Okay, because if you don't have images of the top of the arm, I'm trying to zoom out, but it's not working. Um, if, you, if you don't have images of the top of the arm, we're really not going to know what happens to that. So, again, pointing back to getting really good reference. Okay, so we know how to make an extraction. We looked at some tools that help. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, we looked at some tools that help for creating some nice wrinkles and folds and um, some veins. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit before we wrap things up here. I'm going to actually show you guys an example that I have here to show you and just give you a little refresher on using the – actually, you know what? Let's look at the Decimation Master really quickly, Okay because I was going to show you guys a transfer maps tool, but I'd rather do it in order so I don't confuse anybody. Okay, so let's say we're done with this, okay? 
and it's sitting at it says thirty seven thousand um, polygons but you know what let's let's see if we can reduce that a little bit so you're gonna want to go to Z plugin okay so we got Z plugin here click on that and then we're going to go to decimation master right here oops you gonna let me do this now all right so you want to go in order here okay so usually we don't have any UVs and borders I leave those off um, so from then from that one we go to step two so we want to pre-process so what this does is it kind of says all right figure out where all these details are so we know where you're going to keep the high-res information so that's what it does and sits there and it goes okay sounds good and then we want to let's say we want to get rid of 20 percent okay so we want it to be maybe 200,000 polygons that's quite a bit we could probably bump it down because we know it's only what 37 so maybe we say 20 okay actually Why is it? Ah, okay. Come on, thing. Uh, I think when you update these, it should update. There. So 20% decimation. I usually leave them like that. I get pretty good results. Um, it's up to you. If, if you're looking at it and it's still, let's say you're doing your arm and it's sitting at 10 million polygons after you decimate it, um, still keep going. Keep pushing that down quite a bit. So then all you do is you hit this decimate current and we should have that beautiful decimated geometry we all love. Okay. So that's, that's what it gave me. So. Look familiar. So from here we just go export and there's your sleeve. Okay. So, so that's your sculpted sleeve. I'm not going to save that. All right, so that is how you use Decimation Master. There should be videos up on the assignment for that. Um, if there's not or if you're confused, let me know and we will help. All right, so we're going to look at an arm here. This is our base that we had. I know we got some little bit of transforms there, but that's okay. Then we have our sculpt. So let me hide this so you can see that. Here's our sculpt. And then we have our resurface. Let me hide this and show you the resurface. All right, so this is the density uh, with your resurface that we're looking for. You guys remember what density is? Yes? So if I say your density is too high, you're going to know that your poly count is probably super high as well. Um, we shouldn't see more than... I think, I think the cap Marcus was aiming for and telling campus was 5,000 polygons. Okay, so that's quite a bit for an arm. All right, but um, if we take notice and look at Marcus's arm here, we can see that we're getting a lot of, let me change the color so you can see it, a lot of contouring. And we've, we've got our edge loops kind of flowing around and wrapping to help support all these shapes. And even here we can see that that geometry is kind of twisting in that forearm. Okay, let me clear this out. We'll look at the back. Okay, so remember, I mean, even Marcus is using our diamond junctions. We're seeing box junctions in here. They kind of overlap and work together. But again, we're seeing that bicep is being held, or that deltoid rather, is being held by this edge loop there. See, I told you guys I wasn't very good at names of anatomy. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> he didn't complete the fingers, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So who knows how to generate normal maps? What do I do? So I've got this. Let's make sure, first of all, let's make sure that there are UVs. So yes, there are UVs. Okay, there's some little ones here that need to be taken care of. But overall, we have UVs, we're good to go. 
Okay, so here's our source mesh, high res. Here's our resurface. Let's make sure we soften normals because we do not want all those little squares drawn out. Okay, then we're going to go down here to rendering, lighting and shading, transfer maps. So screen grab that so you guys know where it is. I'm sure most of you do by now since you did the pillow project. So I'm going to click on this and then it brings up this really cool tool here. All right. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that our target mesh is our resurfaced mesh. Now we should probably name these so that we know what we're using. Okay. So there's our resurface. We're going to click on add selected. And now I don't know why this one, hold on, let me clear these all out. Let's do that again. There we go. So the only one that is our target mesh, so that's our resurface mesh, is the resurface shape one. That is what is selected there. Cool. Now we want to load in our source mesh. So I'm going to deselect this. And I'm going to hide this, load in this. Let's make sure to names. Let me move this out of the way. So source mesh, just so that we know what we're using. And then we're going to hit add selected. All right, so let me show these guys. They're both here. They're laying right on top of each other, okay? There might be a little bit of intersecting. That's okay. So we're going to go down here to output maps, All right? So we see normal map right there. Yay, that's what we want. So you're going to hit normal map. Well, actually, it was already there. Um, so we should make sure, make sure it's there. If it's not, you will click on this little image here of a normal map. Okay, and we're looking for Targa. And mine's going to save to my desktop. It's armnormals.tga. And we already have it so that it automatically connects to a shader. So we're good to go. Now, we just want to make sure one thing. Let's make sure that the output is the right size. So make sure you check your settings for that. Um, I'm going to keep this 1024 by 1024 just for demonstration purposes only. Uh, sampling quality. Now this is something that um, if you're making sure that your normals aren't hardened or reversed, you can keep this low. Okay. But once you are actually sampling, make sure you bump that up a bit. And then we're going to make sure everything's in here and we're good to go. And it should just bake. So let's see if I crash today. Bake. All right. So now if we look down here, we will see that it is actually baking for us. So it's taking that source mesh and applying it to our base mesh. It's going to take a little bit. So while we wait for that to load, are there any questions yet on how to do anything? <laughs> I'm an open book. I'm here to help you guys. So if there's anything, let me know. No. Okay. So I'm going to see some awesome, super, Film quality arms. Hopefully, no, you gotta be like, yeah. I was late, did we go over where to get the arm? You're going to be making the arm. So make sure you read the instructions for that assignment. And Sean, um, we will have this archive up on um, FSO later too, so you can catch up in the beginning and find out more about the final project, okay? This is where we need to be careful of the names. Um, I will show you that part. Thank you for bringing that up, John. Um, I was referring to the reference. The reference for the arms is up to you. You can use what we supply you, or you can go and find something on Google. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Let me go ahead and hide this high res. And now we can see this is our low res, right? But we have the high res detail showing up. How cool is that? Thank you, normal maps for being awesome. Now, if you get any sort of artifacts, sometimes if we look under the arm here, you see how we're getting artifacts. Um, this is where we can go in. I'm going to close ZBrush real quick because my ZBrush will be really upset. Let's see. 
No, I don't want to save that. Okay, so I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm going to show you guys a cool trick because sometimes we end up with, with artifacts and we got to take what we're given. Um, so, But we can fix this. I'm going to show you guys how to fix issues that show up. And then we'll talk about be careful with the naming. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just open the Targa that was generated. Now mine was on my desktop. Oh, that's on my desktop. Desktop, there we go. Arm normals TGA. There we go. So I'm going to open this up. We're going to take a look at what happened here. Okay, so these are the areas where we're running into problems. Okay, you see these green areas? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer on top of this. I'm going to use my color picker, and I'm just going to grab just the neutral color out here near it. And I just want to make sure I have a nice brush um, that's a soft brush. It may be a little smaller. I'm just going to go in and zoom in a little bit here. And I'm just going to paint these out. Okay, so let me get my brush. And I've got my new layer so I don't mess up the actual normal map. And I'm just going to kind of go in, paint along this edge. Because this is under the arm. I don't need to worry too much about, oh, is it perfect or... It's okay if some of the detail under the arm is muted, unless your character is selling deodorant or something, then, then we need to worry a little bit. Um, but he's not, so we're good. So I'm just going to paint this out. Remember, use a soft brush, don't use a hard brush. So let's fit this to the screen so we can actually zoom out and see. And now, hey, look at that, purple, perfect little maps. Now, we'd probably have to maybe clean up there. It just depends on where that is on the hand. If it's in between the fingers and you don't really notice it and it's not turning black, then you're good to go. So I'm going to just merge this down. I'm going to save this. Now when we go back into Maya, let's see if we go to our Hypershade. I'm going to just reload this map. So here it is. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff in here. Show me what's connected. Let's reload this. There we go. Good as new. So remember, guys, if that shows up on your arms, don't freak out. Just paint it out. You'll be okay. Okay, so um, if you go in, and let's say I want to change the name of my... I'm going to close this. I have, a bunch of, I have this cool program that hides all the junk on my desktop. Um, but... Let's say I go in and I change this to our naming convention. So let's say I'm going to use my name. Last name, first name. Maybe arm normals goes up here. Now I'm just kind of doing this for demo purposes. Make sure you guys check the actual naming conventions. Arm normals, CDC online. Let's do 1502. All right, so I name that. Now, if I go back into my Maya, it looks like it's still there, but if you were to send this to me, it would still be looking for, okay, I'm going to look here. It's going to still be looking for arms normal. See that? Arm normal is our target. So if I reload this, I'm not going to have anything in there. Okay. Now, if my file was saved to my desktop, um, so let me just do that really quickly so I can show you guys how this works. So you guys are going to be submitting this in a zip. So I'm going to save this as, and everything is going to be in that zip. I don't want project files because what's going to happen is I'm going to save this here. If you put your file in with a folder that has your normal map, so for example, let's go back in and resource this. And again, this is, I'm not going to go through all that. Now I know that's wrong. Desktop. Let's go back to the name that we picked. So that's going to load. Now, if we look at the name, okay, we have all this information here. Now, if I were just to delete this and leave it like that, what's going to happen is whatever folder that that is in, Okay, so for example, your final project folder, you have your Maya scene file and your normal map in there. 
Maya will search for that image name in whatever folder that scene file is in. Okay. So even if I reload this, it still grabs it from the desktop because my scene file is on the desktop. Okay. So you want to get rid of all the stuff before the file name and it will work. It'll still work. So then when I load it on my end, because I'm opening it from that folder that you created, it will still load your normal maps. Okay. Are there any questions on that? Or any questions on your on how to generate normal maps? Anything? No? John, did I answer your question with the naming? You feel like you're good to go now? Awesome. That's what I like to hear. All right, let me hide all the junk on my desktop again. And uh, well, that is it, guys. I really don't have much more to show you. This is really the this is where you just jump in and go kick some butt and create and have fun just creating. Don't stress out. Take your time. Use your reference. Plan and then attack. Um, sounds so overwhelming. It is a lot of work to do. Um, but remember, use your plan. Make those bullet points. Take it a step at a time, and you'll get through. Just take care. Watch your time management. And email me if you need any help. And, John, you're welcome, by the way. So don't panic. You also have tomorrow. So if tonight you guys get to working on your assignments, tomorrow go to Open Lab and just have him look at, have Marcus look at your assignments and where they're at now. And maybe he can kind of give you that last final push to, okay, you're here. This looks good. This looks good. Maybe fix a little bit of this and then go for it. All right. So you're very welcome, guys. Thank you all for taking the time out of your days uh, to come out to the lecture. It's always cool to see all of you. And remember, if you're if you need help and you want live help on Monday, I will be on iChat from 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. next Monday before that final submission. So if you have any questions about naming conventions or getting those maps to load, meet me on iChat and I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Okay? So thank you all. Here's to an awesome final project. Best of luck. And I hope to see you all around. <laughs>